Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today, I'm gonna make a double heart shirt. The shirt was washed and dried, soaked in a soda ash solution for at least 20 to 30 minutes. I spun it out of my panda spin dryer so it's just barely damp. I also have it turned inside out. I wanna put the heart on both the front and the back of the shirt, but I want to dye them different colors. So I'm gonna tie two separate hearts, one on the front and one on the back. So to begin, I'm gonna center my shirt, which basically means that I'm gonna get the center of the front of the shirt right up next to the center of the back of the shirt. That way I can draw the heart on the front of the shirt and on the back of the shirt and tie them separately. This part's gonna go really fast, but down below in the description for this video, I have a link to another video which shows how to center a shirt. To begin, I'm going to fold the bottom of the shirt up to the top just to kind of find the middle of the shirt. I want the hearts to be closer to the top, so I just want to make sure I don't put them a little too low on the shirt. I have a stencil that I've made out of a piece of plastic cutting board. I drew half of a heart onto the cutting board and then cut it out with a pair of scissors. This way I get more consistency, especially in this shirt since I'm going to do the same pattern on both the front and the back. I want to make sure the hearts look pretty much the same. I'm using a washable marker to trace around the stencil, and then I'm going to turn the shirt over to the back and trace the stencil on the other side. From where I'm sitting, I can see where I put the heart on the front side so that I put the one on the back just about level with the one on the front. It's difficult to see from this camera angle, but I can tell as I'm drawing them on. I'm going to begin fan folding the front heart, starting at the top of the heart. I personally think it's a little easier to make that curve in the heart when you start from the top. It's not necessary though, if it's easier for you to start from the bottom, go for it. As I'm fan folding this line, I want to try to keep it as straight as possible. Once I'm finished fan folding this line, I'm going to tie it up with some sinew. I'm going to place the sinew on the line that I just fan folded and gently begin to tighten it. I want to make sure I don't shift the folds by tightening it too quickly. After the folds are being held in place pretty well, I'm going to wrap a few more wraps of the sinew and tighten it down really well. Then to add just a little bit of extra definition around my heart, I'm going to put one more sinew line just on the outside of this one. Now I'm going to tie the heart on the back side the same exact way.
Since the rest of the shirt is an unusual shape, I'm gonna lay it out as flat as I can. And using my hands, I'm gonna make a few scrunch folds in the shirt and hold those folds in place with some kite string. Okay, so now it's time to start applying the dye. To do the heart portion of this shirt, I've put some of the dye down inside some needle tip bottles. These are one ounce bottles, and they will help me have a little bit of extra control over where the dye goes. I'm beginning with red number nine from Grateful Dyes, and I'm gonna add that to one of the hearts. In the extra space right outside of the heart, I'm going to use Plum from Dharma Trading Company. The other heart, I'm using Bubblegum from Pro Chemical and Dye. If you're wondering where I purchased these bottles, down below in the video description are links for lots of different tie-dye items that I use. I usually list the colors of the dye that I've used on the shirt, as well as links to quite a few of the different products that I use when I tie dye. Now I'm going to turn the shirt over and dye the back side. I'm flipping the shirt this way though so that I don't get red on the pink heart and pink on the red heart. Beginning with the bubble gum, I'm going to just randomly add the bubble gum, plum, and red number nine to both sides of the shirt. These colors are going to blend nicely together, so I'm not concerned about keeping them separated. I don't care if they overlap and run into each other. I'm going to continue adding these colors until I feel like I've got pretty good saturation in the middle of the shirt. Then I'm going to set the shirt aside and allow it to process for at least 24 hours. After 24 hours, I began rinsing the shirt in cold water to get out any of the excess soda ash that remained in the shirt. Then I gradually warmed the water up to hot and continued rinsing to get out any of the dye that didn't bond with the shirt. Then I put the shirt in the washing machine and I washed it using some hot water and a little bit of Dharma's textile detergent, dried it in the dryer, and this is what our shirt looks like. I'm really happy with the way this shirt turned out. 
Because I used the same stencil for the heart on the front as I did on the back, the hearts look almost identical, except that they're just different colors. The one on the front is the bubblegum pink, and the one on the back is the red number 9 from Grateful Dyes. I also like the rest of the shirt. I used all the same colors as I used on the hearts for the rest of the shirt. And I like the fact that there was some white left in the shirt. Normally I don't leave a lot of white in a shirt, but I think the added white in this design looks really good. So if you've enjoyed this video, I sure would appreciate it if you would hit the big red subscribe button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.